So we're going to cover four different AI use cases that are all monetizing right now. And I'm going to break them down and show how there's a common pattern here. And I'll be really curious to hear what you think. So number one, this is in the developer side of things, developer workflows. CEO of Amazon, Andy Jassy, tweeted that Amazon had saved an estimated $260 million in efficiency gains because they automated almost all of their upgrades to Java 17 with Amazon Q, which is their internal AI assistant. And so instead of something that would previously have taken a developer months and months to do on large systems like Amazon, not hard. Q just does it in a few minutes. And it's also not fun for developers. I have never met a developer who enjoys upgrading their Java. It's It's got to be done. There's like a security issue if you don't do it, but it's also not something that adds functionality. It's also not something that you can really put on the resume. Like nobody likes doing it. Now Q does it. Jassy estimated that Amazon saved 4,500 developer years as a result. In other words, if you measure one year as like a developer working for a year, they save 4,500 of those just by implementing Q and having Q do Java upgrades. Now, obviously, a startup is not going to have the same kind of savings because they don't have the same kind of scale. But I think it does illustrate how you can get agentic workflows for developers into place and realize value very quickly. And I've been watching to see when will publicly traded companies start to talk about how AI is driving their bottom line. And this is one of the first statements I've seen that is sort of in that direction. Now, it's not actually talking about how Q is helping drive the top line. It's not talking about Q directly saving dollars and cents. This is really efficiency gain. So it's trading out the time that developers would have spent on, you know, manually moving Java 8 to Java 17 and actually putting that time into better use. It's still real savings. It's just not savings that's going to necessarily appear on the bottom line. And I think that's a higher bar. And we need to keep waiting for that to see wh when AI is going to be credited for that. But nonetheless, it's a big deal. All right. Number two. This one's in law. And there's two of them actually wrapped inside this. So Spellbook is releasing Spellbook Associate, which is an AI agent for law. And that's big because you need AI agentic workflows to work through big multi-document legal matters. Otherwise, you're just asking the LLM over and over again. And I've been saying for a long time, just asking the LLM is cognitively expensive. It's not going to be easy to do. It won't last. We're starting to see other workflows. Now, competition is super tight in AI spaces. So as soon as Spellbook Associate was announced, the other big competitor in the space, Harvey, which also uses AI, released a press release talking about how high their user retention is, 70% over a year, how they have growing uses, usage by firms who pick up Harvey and during the year use it more and more as they come to trust it. So we'll see what Harvey actually releases. This very much feels like a defensive press release to me. But I think the fact that they felt they had to release something just to punch back at Spellbook suggests that they're a little bit worried about the power of agent-based workflows. They're worried about a lawyer being able to tell Spellbook Associate exactly what they would tell any other associate and go have them run down multi-document research and come back and give them an overall assessment and approach on the case. Does that mean the associate is always right? No, the human associate isn't right either all the time. So there's going to be a tolerance for error here that is probably scary if you're Harvey and you're a competitor. Underlines how fast the world is shifting. I think we're going to see more and more of this move from a ask the LLM type software solution to a let the agent do it type software solution. Be really curious to see how that goes. All right, that's number two. Number three is in sales. This is actually a startup. I'm really curious what you think of it. Clay.com has data enrichment uh, that they have automated for sales leads across 75 different data sources. And then they will also automate the outreach for you on top of that. So all you bring is like a list of email addresses and they will take care of turning that list of email addresses into a complete verified profile. And they will also make sure that you are not being charged SaaS like fees across all 75 of these sources. You have sort of a tokenized pay as you go system. 
What's interesting about this to me is that there is some AI there. There's a la large language model element to that outreach for sure. But there's also just a traditional bundle and save play. And it's reminding me again, there is money to be printed in these spaces if you are combining smart AI use cases with ordinary best practice business value that we've been able to build for a long time. Bundling together a bunch of different services that would individually cost a lot and making sure customers can get access to all of them and save is as old as TV bundling. Like we've had that for a long time. It's probably older than that. The point is, it's not particularly new. It doesn't take AI and it still works really well because it was a good idea that solved a real problem. We'll see more of those too. All right, the last one I wanna call out is that perplexity is starting to rumor their plans for monetization. This hit, I think it was CNBC and they are charging a lot. So j just for the like background, you can charge a couple of bucks for display impressions, right? Like $2 CPMs are not unusual. They're charging 50. They're charging $50 for a CPM for search appearances in perplexity. We don't really know what ads in LLMs look like. They have been demoed. They look in context like part of the answer as far as I've seen. I think that people are making the case if you work in, in sales at those organizations, if you work in sales at Perplexity or sales at OpenAI, that if it appears in context, it's going to be more powerful and influential and therefore justifies the price. Maybe, we'll see. But I tell you what, can you imagine the impact on the market if the market is suddenly willing to pay $50 CPMs? Wild. I, I have no idea if they're gonna be able to pull that off, uh, but just seeing the price point is reminding me that AI is not free, AI is going to monetize, and wow, the numbers are eye popping. And that leads me to sort of my last reflection. These agent-based workflows are not really designed for the software pricing model that we have today. The pricing model we have today is really like, you have a person, they can do a job, they can do their job with your software, done. What we have coming is have the agent do it for you, and that's great. It's almost like a virtual employee, which I know that there was a big release about um, just a few months ago. I think it was Bamboo that did the virtual employee. And they talk about the space for that in an HR system like Bamboo, but they obviously hadn't built it. And now that we start to see it, it's reminding me that we haven't priced it well. I don't know what you charge for that because the savings is tremendous, pretty much whatever you charge. And we're starting to see some eye-popping numbers because the savings is so high. So even with clay, which is not just AI, it's also just bundling together manual research hours. It's, and this is the, uh, the sales one I talked about earlier. It is charging hundreds of dollars a month because that's vastly cheaper than paying someone to do it on a monthly basis. And so we're gonna start to see some big numbers we're going to start to see software subscription top line revenue numbers that we haven't seen in a long time, maybe ever, because what they're going after is not replacing the software economy, which is in the hundreds of billions of range, but they're eating into the costs that business allocates for compensation, right? For, for paychecks. And that's in the trillions. In fact, I think the global estimate is $10 trillion. And so you're gonna to start to see really eye-popping numbers if this catches on and agents are able to be priced correctly. And I'll be really curious to see how people do it. What did I miss? What did you think you're gonna see for agent-based workflows?